Imagine we have a data set with a few animals and their features like whether the animal can fly, eats meat and lays eggs. Based on these features, we also have an output column that says whether the animal is a bird or not. Now using this data set, we want to train a decision tree. A decision tree is basically a tree-like structure that makes a series of decisions at each node. Kind of like playing questions and moving forward. Suppose we start with the feature, can fly. Based on this, we divide our dataset into two groups. Animals that cannot fly like cats, ostrich, elephant and penguin. And animals that can fly, butterfly, eagle, bat and peacock. This gives us our root node split. Now on the left side, where animals cannot fly, we check the next feature, lays eggs. Elephants and cats do not lay eggs. And they are not birds. Penguins and ostriches, however, do lay eggs. And they are birds. This branch is done. On the right side, with animals that can fly, we again check lays eggs. A bat does not lay eggs. So, it's not a bird. Butterflies, peacocks and eagles do lay eggs, so they go on the other side. But this group is still mixed because butterfly is not a bird, while peacock and eagle are. We need one more split. This time we use eats meat. Butterflies do not eat meat, so it gets classified as not a bird. Peacocks and eagles do eat meat, so they are birds. And there we have our complete though somewhat naive decision tree. To test it, Let's take a chicken as an example. First question, can chicken fly? No. Second, does it lay eggs? Yes. So, the tree predicts bird. Our tree has just passed the test. And that's essentially how a decision tree works. Keep asking feature-based questions until the groups are separated. Of course, this dataset is a tiny and just for teaching purpose. So don't take it literally and comment that the model is classifying snakes incorrectly. In the real world, we work with datasets that have thousands of rows and many features. But the underlying idea stays exact the same. Now the reason I said this tree is naive is because we didn't use any proper rule to select the features. We were just randomly picking them as we went along. But what if we had started with a different feature as the root node like its meat or lays egg? It turns out that if we had used lay eggs at the root and then split on each smith, we could have built the same tree in a much shorter way. And in fact, we wouldn't even need the can fly feature at all. That would make the decision tree more efficient, simpler and faster. Basically, the tree wouldn't waste time asking unnecessary questions. But how do we actually know which feature to pick at each step? We need some way to measure the amount of misclassifications when using a feature. And for that, we use something from statistics called Guinea impurity. Guinea impurity basically measures how often a randomly chosen element would be misclassified if it were randomly labeled according to the distribution of classes in a node. The formula for Guinea impurity looks like this. Here, C is the total number of classes. In our case, we have only two output classes, bird or not bird. And this PI is the proportion of class I in that node. For example, in our dataset, we can calculate how many animals in a node are birds and how many are not. The summation term adds up the squares of these proportions, which tells us how pure the node is. Subtracting this value from 1 gives us the impurity, that is how mixed the node is. A higher impurity value means more misclassifications. Now, here is an important property for binary classification. The maximum value of Guinea impurity is 0.5. Why? Because the worst case happens when the two classes are split perfectly 50-50. In that case, the node is as mixed as possible. On the other hand, if one class dominates, say 90% birds and 10% not birds, the impurity goes down, meaning the node is purer. And of course, if all examples are from a single class, the impurity becomes zero, which is perfectly pure. It may feel like a little abstract at first, but don't worry, it gets much clearer once we actually plug in numbers and work through examples. In our example, we have a total of eight animals, out of which four are birds and four are not birds. 
So, if we plug these proportions into the Gini formula, we get 0.5. This means the data set is perfectly split between birds and not birds, that is maximum impurity. The idea behind decision trees is to find a feature that reduces this impurity as much as possible. If we first check the can fly feature, it will classify like this. Let's first calculate the guinea impurity of the no branch. On the no side, we have four animals, two non-birds and two birds. So it's a half-half split and the guinea comes out to 0.5. Similarly, on the yes side, we also have four animals, two non-birds and two birds. So the guinea here is also 0.5. To find the overall guinea for this feature, we take the weighted average of the two branches. Since there are four samples out of eight on the no side and four out of eight on the yes side, we multiply each branch's guinea by its weight and add them up. This gives 0.5 overall. No improvement from the dataset's original guinea of 0.5. Next, let's check the lay eggs feature. In this case, we have three samples on the no side, and none of them are birds. So the guinea for this group is zero, which means the group is pure. On the yes side, we have five samples with four birds and one not bird. So the guinea there is 0.32. Taking the weighted guinea, three out of eight on the no side and 5 out of 8 on the yes side, the overall guinea for this feature comes out to 0.2, which is a big improvement over the previous one and over the whole data set. Now, if you calculate the same for each meat, the overall guinea comes out to 0.375. So, out of all three features, Lay's eggs gives the best split with minimum misclassifications, and we will choose that as the root node. The left side is already a pure group, so we don't need to split it any further. Instead, we will focus on the right side and perform the same steps recursively. For those five samples on the right, the overall guinea is 0.32. Now, just like before, if we calculate the guinea for the remaining features, we will find that each meat feature gives the lowest guinea of zero, meaning it perfectly classifies all the splits in this branch. So, we will choose each meat here as the next split and that's how we train a decision tree by recursively choosing the best feature at each node. Splitting the data step by step until either the groups become pure or no better splits can be made. Now, I want to briefly talk about something called pruning. In real world datasets, we don't just keep splitting the tree forever because that would lead to overfitting. Basically, the tree memorizes the training data instead of learning useful patterns. Instead, we stop splitting once certain criteria are met. For example, we might stop if the tree has already reached a maximum depth or if the impurity is below a set threesold. This is called pre-pruning. There is also something called post-pruning, where we first let the tree grow fully and then cut off branches that don't perform well on the validation dataset. And if you don't know what a validation dataset is, check out the detailed video on training testing validation datasets. The link is in the description. Now, what if a feature has more than two values? For example, take a feature like weight, which can be high, low, or moderate. A decision tree cannot directly split on three different values at once because we are working with binary yes-no type questions. To handle this, we transform the feature into separate binary features, one for weight is high, another for weight is low, and another for weight is moderate. For any given sample, only one of these will be yes, and the others will be no. This technique is called one-hot encoding, and it allows the decision tree to treat multi-valued features in the same way it treats simple binary features. Now, an even trickier case, what if the feature is not discrete at all, but continuous, like weight being an actual number instead of just high, low, or moderate? In that case, the tree cannot just split on categories. It needs to find the threefold value of x that divides the data in a way that gives the least misclassification. For example, here the most optimal threefold comes out to be 4.25. But how do we actually calculate it? The process is pretty straightforward. 
first sort all the weight values in increasing order then take the average of every adjacent pair like between the first and second value second and third and so on each of these averages is a candidate threshold then for every candidate calculate the guinea impurity which tells you how much misclassification happens at that point finally pick the threshold with the minimum impurity you know in our case that turns out to be 0.2 which corresponds to a threshold of 4.25 now decision trees are not just used for classification problem they can also be used for regression imagine we have a data set where the output is not a simple yes or no but a continuous value like the weight of animals at first this might sound more complicated but the idea is actually quite similar the only difference is that instead of measuring impurity we now measure variance in statistics and data science variance is simply a way of measuring how spread out the values are so in regression trees what we do is choose features that give the maximum reduction in variance after the split if we calculate the variance of our data set here it comes out to be 8.9 that's our starting point now the task is to figure out which feature when used as the root node will reduce this variance the most among the three features we have let's check which one does the best job for the first feature the variance on the left side of the data set will be zero because it only has one sample on the right side the variance comes out to be 8.3 if we take the weighted average that gives us 7.26 now if we try the second feature the weighted variance comes out to be 8.27 and for the third feature it's 7.34 clearly the first feature each meet is the best split here since it reduces variance the most so we will choose that as the root node on the left side there is only one sample so there is no need to split further instead we just take the average weight of that sample group since there is only one sample the average is simply its own weight on the right side however things are more interesting we have multiple samples and the variance here is still 8.3 so we need to split again looking at the remaining features if you calculate the weighted variance you will see that lay x gives the best reduction so that becomes our next node and finally at the lowest level we split on can fly for each of the resulting groups we simply take the average of the weights of the animals in that group and those become the prediction at the leaf nodes and just like that we have built a regression tree where instead of class levels like bird or not bird the tree is predicting continuous values like weight so if we now want to predict the weight of an animal that eats meat lays eggs and can fly we just follow the path down the regression tree this takes us to a leaf node that gives a prediction of 4.25 kg now one big issue with decision trees is that they are very sensitive to small changes in the data set For example, with our data set, the tree looks a certain way. But if we change just one sample, say replace an eagle with a turtle, the entire tree structure could change completely. That's not ideal. And it's a problem we need to solve. The solution, instead of relying on a single tree, we build multiple decision trees. For a classification problem, we let all the trees vote. and pick the class with the most votes while for regression problems we simply take average of the outputs from all the trees this approach makes the model much more stable and reliable now i want to talk about one very important algorithm called the random forest algorithm but before we get there we need to understand a key concept from statistics called sampling with replacement imagine our data set sitting nicely inside the box Now the idea is to pick elements randomly from this data set but every time we pick one we put it back before the next draw this way the data set never shrinks we are just making copies 
So if we pick 8 samples from a data set of size 8, using this method, you will notice something interesting. Some samples will repeat, like snake or butterfly here, while others might not appear at all, like bat or chicken. That's completely normal. And this is exactly what we use to build random forests. We create many such datasets and train a separate decision tree on each one. This randomness makes our training data much more diverse and ultimately makes the whole model much more robust and powerful than a single decision tree. So, in the random forest algorithm, what we actually do is take n samples out of n datasets using sampling with replacement and then train a decision tree on each of these samples. But there is another twist. Instead of using all the features, we only pick k features out of m at each split, where k is smaller than m. This is done to introduce even more randomness, which prevents the tree from becoming too similar. A common rule of thumb is to set k equals to the square root of m. We repeat this process b times, where b is just the number of iterations or the number of trees in the forest. Now it is usually something like 100 or 200, though there is no strict rule. A practical way is to start with 100 trees and increase or stop based on the performance. And it turns out that increasing the number of trees never hurts the performance, but it gives diminishing returns. Finally, once all the trees are trained, we combine their outputs. For classifications, we take the majority vote and for regression, we take the average. And that's it. That's random forest.